The development of Anthony Simons and the trade with Detroit for Jeremy Grant has given Big Game Dame some reinforcements in Rip City. Damian Lillard's a six-time All-NBA player, undoubtedly a future Hall of Famer, who deserves but never receives credit for staying with the franchise that drafted him for his entire career. In addition to Anthony Simons and Jeremy Grant, a healthy Yusuf Nurkic up front, along with a top rebounding guard in Josh Hart, gives Dame the most top-heavy roster he's had around him since the LaMarcus Aldridge era. This video, I'll be overreacting to the Portland Trailblazers' shocking start. Before continuing, just 9% of you watching this video are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Also, please leave a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference and takes just a few seconds. For NBA edits, follow at dflowhoops on Instagram. Thanks for supporting the content. In 57 showings last season, Anthony Simons quietly averaged over 17 points per game. He attempted a hefty 7.83 point shots per night and made an NBA ninth best among shooting guards, 40.5% of them. Problem was, Simons played just 29.5 minutes per game, so his impact couldn't be felt to the fullest extent. That may seem like a good amount of playing time, but this year, albeit in just four outings, Chauncey Billups is giving Anthony 37.3 minutes per game, and the Blazers are seeing the full benefits of that increased PT. While the Blazers' start as a whole has been shocking, Based off how Simons performed last year, his current 19.8 per game averages shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. Anthony's efficiency is even down from last year, which may display that Portland's hot start could definitely keep up. Against Phoenix, with the game knotted at 111 apiece in the dying seconds, Simons drove past first-team All-NBA defender Mikhail Bridges and dropped in a stone-cold floater for the win. While his percentages from the field and from three-point range are down so far, it's safe to say Simons found his rhythm in Portland's fourth game of the year against Denver. The second half specifically was where Anthony located that rhythm as the 23-year-old dropped six threes and 22 points, not for the game, not for the third quarter alone, but in six minutes. This man can light it up in the blink of an eye, and given the Blazers already have a premier high-volume three-point bucket getter in Dame, Simons potentially being a 20 to 25 point per night guy this year gives Portland an intimidating amount of shot creation. The NBA is a superstar three point driven league, so having one or two players who can get space for themselves when operating off the dribble in either pick and rolls or isolations can cover a multitude of sins. If Portland's first or second play set on any given possession doesn't work out, they can feel comfortable in giving it to either Dame or Simons to manufacture a shot from nothing at the back end of a shot clock. I know what you're thinking though, that's the same thing Portland had with CJ McCollum. However, Simons can score in the flow of the offense much better than CJ, being able to use less dribbles to create offense. Being an efficient non-ball stopper is exactly what Dame needs next to him. Anthony's far from a liability on defense, as he's got a 6'9 wingspan despite being just 6'3. He's gotten significantly stronger since the beginning of last season, which helps him avoid getting bodied off positions like he did at the very start of his career. His mix of reach, lateral quickness, and that improved muscle has allowed Simons to rank third on the Blazers in steals per game and 11th at his position in defensive rating. Portland's 4-0 for the first time in 23 years and are the lone undefeated team in the Western Conference. Dame just won the NBA's Western Conference Player of the Week for the week ending Sunday. He averaged 34 points, 5.3 boards, and 4.3 dimes over the Blazers' first three games of the year. And after four games of this season, his shooting split is at a legendary 50-40-90. Lillard continues to be the most underappreciated star in the game today lest we forget that since Damian was drafted in 2012, the 32-year-old in his prime has only failed to carry Portland into the playoffs in two of his 11 career seasons. However, that fact's been overshadowed by the ridicule based around how the Blazers haven't achieved too much in the playoffs, as this franchise has a total of just four playoff series wins since Dame's arrival in Portland 10 years ago. CJ McCollum gave Lillard a ton of support but as the only superstar on his roster, Dame's been game planned for and therefore constantly blitzed by opposing defenses in any playoff series that he's ever been in. In the ring chasing era, 
where it's expected that a top player is going to move on from the franchise they're currently a part of to chase a championship ring, the value in Dame's loyalty has been undermined by skeptics who question what he's done on the biggest stage. Those haters aren't aware how good Lillard's individual performance has been in the postseason. Despite being the lone superstar caliber player on his roster, Lillard's averaged at the very least 21.6 points per game in the postseason in every year of his career, aside from the year when he was playing on a bad ankle in 2018. But the main reason for why Damian should be respected is for how he's played most recently when it matters most. Because in 2021's playoffs, despite the Blazers getting taken care of in six games by the Nuggets, while everyone blames the number one guy when things go wrong, Lillard was incredible in that series. He averaged 34.6 points and 10.7 dimes per night on 66% true shooting. He's never had another Hall of Fame player next to him, and maybe he still doesn't, but along with the backcourt of Simons and Lillard being massive contributors to their early success, this past offseason, Portland traded for a high-volume wing who's extremely versatile. That player's Jeremy Grant, who's coming off being the number one scoring option for the last few years, but now has much less playmaking responsibility next to Lillard and Simons. When Grant drove past LeBron and finished around Anthony Davis for this game-winning take to the bucket, we all realized how dangerous of a pickup he was for the Blazers. Last year, Portland ranked second worst in defensive rating, but this season, Jeremy's lockdown clamps have lifted Portland to the number nine ranked defense. Of course, it's way too early to say whether the Blazers are capable of keeping up that type of elite efficiency on defense, but I think it's clear Portland having Jeremy Grant as their third option will be scary for opponents. Outside of the top five in Dame, Simons, Jeremy Grant, Josh Hart, and Yusuf Nurkic, this year's number seven overall pick out of Kentucky, Shaden Sharp, has provided solid depth on the wing and shown flashes of living up to the expectations that come with being such a high lottery pick. You can't forget about Nasir Little, who's a functional rim-protecting finisher who can go after it on the offensive glass. Nasir was 2019's number 25 overall pick and has earned his place in this Blazer rotation. Little's posting 6.8 points per game so far, but his value shows up in the player efficiency rating department. The power forward out of North Carolina is second in PER among Blazer rotation players, only behind Damian Lillard. Most of what I just broke down could very well seem like nonsense in a few weeks, given it's so damn early, hence the title of this video. That said, in your opinion, are the Blazers legit? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top five commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's speaks winners are firstly GTN, who says JT's sidestep three on the wing is cash money almost every time. And secondly to Swoo, who says outside of his rebounding, I'm gonna have to say Kavon's perimeter defense has impressed me, even though we didn't see that much of it because there aren't that many capable stretch fives in the NBA. But from what I've seen, Loon looks solid on the perimeter. He moves his feet well and quickly for his position and rarely gets cooked by guards and wings. Thanks for watching, have a good one.